Hi everyone, my name is Jonathan Sanchez, artist at CG Sketch. Today I'm going to share an uh, easy and quick way to use Phoenix FD to um, generate the appearance of um, waterfalls, water fountains, these, these um, decorative elements that we see in a lot of modern pools. Um, you could use it for a still image, you could use it for an animation. In this case here, I've, I generated a quick little animation of the um, of the results from what I'm going to show you how to do. In this case, the water might be moving a little bit fast, but you get a general idea and it, it looks fairly fairly convincing. The effect is is nice. Um, so if you look at um, reference pictures of these uh, walls of water, these little water fountains uh, that we see in some of these pools, you have, uh, generally speaking, a single body of water kind of falling down. You have these little splashes and foam and mist when it hits the surface. And all that stuff can be simulated within Phoenix. It's an awesome little app, so let's see how to do it. All right, so here I have the scene that I used to generate that uh, the previous animation that I, that I showed. So I have a simple surface here from which um, the water can emit. I have a pool and I have a camera. Now it's important if you're gonna be doing an animation that your camera show uh, motion blur. So make sure that motion blur is enabled um, right here, okay? So once we have everything set up, I mean, we just wanna pick an, an item from which we want the simulation to emit from. Okay, so in this case, I have a polygon in here inside this emitter um, that is not renderable, and I want the water to emit from there. So I select it. Once we have our Phoenix toolbar um, up, you'll see that it has a couple of presets that are great. We have tap water, we have a couple other items here, we have waterfall. In this case, I'm just going to use the tap water setup, uh, and let's see what that looks like. So just go ahead and have your emitter object selected and just click on tap water. Okay. Right away, you'll see that it creates a container box. And within that container box is where the app will simulate uh, all the water feature you're trying to generate. So in this case, the container box is a bit low. So I'll go ahead and um, raise it up a bit so that the bottom is just below the water line, which is just a polygon with an animated texture, by the way, uh, just right there. And then I'll scale the size up somewhere like that and like this. Okay. And I want it all the container to be open. And what that means is instead of the water collecting and building up and filling up, the water is just going to kind of exit its way out of the container and just disappear. Okay. Now there's a few important um, numbers that you want to keep in mind whenever you're dealing with Phoenix, and that is the resolution of the simulation. So higher resolution is going to generally get you more accurate results, but at the cost of high calculation time. So you want to find the balance. Uh, perhaps in your tests, you want to, uh, you could decrease the resolution to run at a lower rate to, you know, make the, 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 the process faster to calculate. And then when you have everything the way you want it, you can increase the resolution to, to render out the final product and, and make it look nicer. I'll just leave it as is for now, but I will set the, uh, the scene scale at one. And let's go ahead and press play on the simulation to see what this looks like. So the water is falling off, but doesn't seem to have enough speed. So let's give it more velocity. Let's select our liquid source object. And over here, you'll see outgoing velocity. Let's almost double that. Let's make it three feet. And let's render again. Let's calculate again. And now you see it seems to be coming out with a bit more force, a little bit closer to what we want to achieve. Let's go ahead and stop the simulation and take a look at some of the other numbers. 
So if we come on here, we have, uh, like I mentioned, scene scale one at one. You could increase, decrease the resolution accordingly. Um, we go, go on down, we have uh, steps per frame. This will also increase the accuracy of your simulation. Um, it'll just, this determines how many calculations per frame um, Phoenix is going to do. Let's drop that to eight, make it a little faster. Now, again, it depends how fast your liquid is moving and then you'll have to play with this number to achieve desirable results while maintaining efficient calculation speeds. And okay, let's try this again. All right, let's see what this looks like. Let's give it a quick material. I've generated here a quick water material, just to diffuse on black, reflect and refract both pure white, the IOR 1.33 for water, and I gave it a little bit of fog color um, to just dis distinguish the water a bit more, hopefully make it a little bit more uh, apparent for you guys. So I'll give it this material, and let's render out and see what this looks like. So you see already the effect is starting to be fairly convincing. Um, I mean, I have a little bit too much fog color there, but I, I'm doing this just so you guys could hopefully distinguish the waterfall a little more. Uh, you might want to make yours a little bit more transparent, but perhaps for a still image, this might be enough. Um, you guys might not need any more detail. So you see in, in, in less than a couple of minutes, I generated this effect and uh, you have the a bit of splashing down here. You have the nice water wall. Um, but let's say we wanted to add some of those bubbles, some of that foam that we saw in the original reference pictures, something that looks a little bit more like this stuff here. So Phoenix FD has uh, awesome functions for um, foam and mist. You're going to have to play with it, though. There is no, There are no presets. Um, that suit all projects. You're going to have to tweak the numbers for your particular circumstances um, and, and, and make it work for you. In my case here, I've messed around with this. I'm going to enable foam right here. That set up the uh, particle, simu particle simulator. Uh, and I've played some with the numbers. I have an idea here of what works in this case. So in the foam amount, I'll set it to 30. Lifespan will uh, determine how long each bubble lives in number of seconds. So in this case, I want mine to live only a quarter of a second. So I'll set that there. Let's make the bubbles a little smaller, so 0.2 inches. And by the way, scale is very important with Phoenix. So I have my unit set up to uh, inches. Um, just make sure your scales are all correct in order for the simulation to be accurate. Um, and now let's say we want to add Missed as well, so we'll enable it here, create the simulator, and the, the splash amount, uh, I'll drop that to five. I don't want such big of a splash. For the threshold, I'll make that 30. And now you also have to make sure, if you got motion blur and you want a simulator, you also have to make sure that the velocity for the mist and foam is checked here. So mist, foam, velocity, both checked, okay? So let's go ahead and calculate that and see what the result is. Maybe I'll fast forward here so that you guys don't have to wait for this. The simulation is done. Let's take a look, see what that looks like. And now you can see, we quickly generated these uh, nice little foam effects, uh, little splashes and bubbles and stuff that would realistically be there um, in this situation. Again, you have to play with the effects to make sure that um, that it suits your scene and your environment. It takes a little tweaking, but it's uh, once you get an idea of what each, uh, what each function does, it's really not that hard. Um, and again, you can, you can add motion blur for a little bit of added realism. Once you have your simulation, if it's a 
in the case of something like this, you can uh, you can loop it, come down here and, and under input, make it loop. So that instead of simulating, you know, however many frames you have, so you have a thousand frames in your scene, you just simulate a hundred frames worth of uh, simulation and then just loop that simulation over and over. It's a lot of cool little features in this. And again, the effect is pretty convincing, as you could tell here. Um, so I hope this was uh, useful for you guys. If you like this tutorial, stick around. I'll be posting a few more. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, please drop them below. Thanks, guys.